So in this video, we're going to talk about graphing lines. Um, specifically, we're going to do quick graphs using slope-intercept form. So here's the directions for how to use um, slope-intercept form to do a quick graph. Um, so these are written, but the thing is, is that you actually need to actually do this in order to really get a good feel for it. So remember that slope-intercept form um, uh, has the outline y equals m times x plus b, where m, remember, is the slope and B is the Y intercept or the place where the graph is crossing the Y axis. So it's a specific point. So the first step is you're gonna graph the Y intercept. Then you're going to make sure that you understand or actually write down the directions that the slope is telling you to go. So remember that the rise tells you to go up or down depending what sign it is and the run tells you to go left or right again depending on what sign it is. Then, starting from the y-intercept, you're going to use your rise and run, you know, the up-down movement or left and right and the left-right movement together to find your next point. Um, you should try and use a third point just to make sure that it does come out to be straight, just to make sure you're not making a mistake. Um, but sometimes you may not have enough room on your graph, so two is the minimum that you need. Um, last thing is you connect the points with a straight edge if you're drawing it or if you're on the computer with a straight line um, tool and then make sure you may have arrows at the endpoints. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so just a couple things to remember. Um, remember slope is a ratio, rise and run. Okay, and the slope is a big important number that you need to get out of your equation in order for this to work. Okay, so the rise, remember, can be a number that's positive or negative. If it's positive, that number is going to tell you to go up from your y-intercept. If it's negative, it's going to tell you from your y-intercept you should go down. The run is the denominator of the slope. Um, remember, if you don't see a denominator, that means it's in one. Um, if it's positive, it's telling you to go right from, from wherever you're at and it's telling you to go left from wherever you're at if it's negative. Okay, the other thing is is that there's two ways to get a negative slope and there's two ways to get a positive slope. And that depends on where the locations of the negatives are. Okay, so our positive slopes, okay, are gonna come if both the rise and the run are positive or if both the rise and the run are negative. Sometimes for convenience sake, we may need them both to be negative because just for, we may not have enough room um, to go on find another point if we uh, go ahead and continue in positive directions both, okay? Negative is gonna come if you only have one, either the rise or the run can be negative. So it doesn't matter where you put the negative, you can put it either either in the numerator for the rise or in the denominator of the ratio uh, for slope if um, for the run. Okay, so it's your choice where the negative goes. So if we had a slope like m equals 5 over 2, and I was saying, okay, what is the directions that slope is telling me to go? So if I treated this like a positive over a positive, well, rise and being positive means go up. Run being positive says go to the right. I also could do it, okay, as a negative over a negative, and if I did it that way, then it would be down and left. So that means for every five units, I would go down, I would go left too. And we'll see when we go ahead and we actually do some graphing that it still is going to lead us on a straight line. It doesn't matter which two directions we choose as long as we're choosing them so that overall the slope is positive. Okay, um, some other things to remember about slope. Remember if it's a whole number, the hidden denominator is a 1. Remember if the slope is exactly 0, it has a hidden denominator of one. And if the slope is undefined, sorry, uh, undefined slope means that it's 
one over zero would be a good way to go ahead and use it, which means that you only are going up one, but you never go over. So that's why it's a vertical line. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice. So down here we have an equation and it says y equals negative three over two x times x plus two. So knowing that in slope intercept form, the coefficient of x is going to be our slope. That tells me that my slope for this line is negative three over two. So depending on how I wanna do this, I can think of it as negative three over two or three over negative two. I just need to choose one. Most people tend to go ahead and just put the negative in the numerator and it doesn't matter at all. As long as you go ahead and assign it to just one of them when the slope is negative. Okay, the y-intercept is going to be the term, the constant term of the equation um, when the y is all by itself on one side of the equation. So this, okay, take the sign that's in front of it. If it says minus, that means it's negative. If it says plus, that means it's positive. So the y-intercept is positive two. Okay, so remember in the directions for how to graph a line. Okay, it says first you graph the y-intercept. Okay, so our y-intercept is at positive two. So I go on my y-axis. Here is my origin, zero, zero. So I go to positive two and I'm gonna put my point on the y-axis at positive two. Okay, that's my y-intercept. Remember y-intercept is where my line is gonna cross the y-axis. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my slope to find other points. Okay, so I wrote the slope as a ratio and now I'm gonna go ahead and think about what the movements are for it. And then I'm gonna use it to find another point. Okay, so if my numerator is negative, remember numerator for slope tells me to go up or down. Negative means go down. So I'm going to go down three, and then the denominator is positive. And remember, run means go right or left. Positive run means to the right. So it's saying down three, right two. Now, it's only, this is for one to find the next point. So it's saying I'm starting here and I'm gonna to go to both movements before I go ahead and get to my next point. So it's like a treasure hunt, and these are my directions I've been giving on the treasure hunt. It says to find the next treasure, I have to go down three, one, two, three, and right two, one, two. That is where you'll find your treasure. Okay, so if there was an infinite amount of treasures, they all would be on this path. So maybe they did it that way. Okay, so I can go ahead and I can find another one. Down, one, two, three, right, two. It's in a line. Okay, now I did say that you can always reverse the direction. So just to go ahead and show you how that works out. Okay, say I had gone ahead and done it so that the negative was in the bottom and the numerator was a positive number. So that would mean up three and left two. But if it's the same slope, I should end up still in a line. So if I went up three, one, two, three, and left two, one, two, they still all line up. Okay, and so then last steps are, okay, connect the points with a straight edge and draw arrows at the endpoints. So because I'm on a computer, I can just go ahead and use my straight line tool and just make sure that it has arrows on the ends and go ahead and connect my points. And there is my line. And I can even change the color of it if I like. And make it bigger if I like. So I don't have to really do much math. Um, just thinking about directions, um, just analyzing the equation, thinking about what the slope is, what the y-intercept is, 
goes ahead and gives me plenty of information so I can go ahead and get my equation. I could still do a table of values instead um, where I just pick three, you know, pick some numbers for x, negative one, um, zero, and one, but then I'm going to end up with fractions, so maybe I would pick negative two, zero, and two, um, and then so I don't end up with the fractions because that matches my denominator, and to go ahead and do that, and then come up with them uh, mathematically, and that would work too. Okay, so let's try this one. So this one says y equals four times x minus three. Okay, so on your own, go ahead and figure out what's the slope and the directions, and then what is the y-intercept. Okay, so let's see how you did. So you should have gotten for the slope that it is four, and that gives you a slope of four over one, which means you're going up four and right one, or you're gonna go down and left depending on how you decided to do it. The y-intercept would be negative three. Okay, so remember step one is to graph your y-intercept because you have to have a place to begin. So I go to the y-axis, here is zero, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay, next I use my slope to find other points. So I've written my slope as a ratio, I've determined the directions, so I'm going to go up four and over one. So starting from my y-intercept, one two, three, four, and then write one. Okay, and then I can continue, if I have enough room, I would continue in that direction. One, two, three, four, write one. If I didn't have enough room and I wanted to go ahead and do an extra, another point, I could go down one, two, three, four, left one, because those is my equivalent slope when I reverse both directions. Okay, and then my last step is to go ahead and draw my line, connecting the points, and it should have arrows at both ends. Okay, so if I wanted to check to see if I actually did this right, and verify that this is really and truly the graph of the line, I can pick any point on here, and so this one is at two, five are its coordinates. And then I would go to my equation and I would go ahead and plug in the X coordinate of my point, which is two, and I'm gonna do the math. Four times two is eight, eight minus three is five. And that's what the Y coordinate is. And that's what my equation says that Y should be. So I know that 2, 5 is a solution to my equation because it's a point and it has to be a point on the line. It's a point on the line of my graph. So therefore, I know I did do my graph correctly. Okay, now some students get confused on this one because they're like, well, there's no number in front of the x. So they think that the slope is 0. But remember that the slope is not 0 if you don't see a number in front of the x. If you see the x, there is a number there that's not zero. Remember, the hidden number is always going to be a one because one times x is equal to x. So if you don't see a coefficient for x, um, it's a one. So that's just like if you had negative in front of the x, this is saying that the slope would be negative one because it's a negative and then the one that's in between the negative sign and the x. Okay, but for ours, there's no negative sign, so we know that a slope is just a one. Okay, so remember the hidden denominator of one is one. So that would be up and right, or it could be down and left. Okay, and then the y-intercept is going to be positive four. Okay, so step one, graph the y-intercept. So y-axis, go to positive one, which is right here. And then using our slope, we're gonna go up one, right one. Up one, right one. Or I could go down one, left one. But they're all lined up, so I'm ready to go ahead and graph.
Okay, so last one we're gonna do, if this one has y equals negative six and there's no x at all. So what could make the x disappear? Well, the only number that you can multiply anything by to make it be a number that, you know, you can add to negative six, that would just give you negative six, it has to make it a zero, right? So it had to be something along with zero. But say you're stuck and you have no clue. Well, let's go back to our tried and true table of values. So if I had made a table of values for this and I said, okay, well, this equation is saying y is always negative six. Doesn't matter what I pick for x. So if I pick negative one, zero, and one for x, the only thing y can be is negative six. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph it and then we'll go ahead and we'll figure out what the slope and the y-intercepts are. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and when I look at this, I see that y um, equals negative six gives me the points, negative one, negative six, zero, negative six, and one, negative six, were three of mine. Okay, if I had picked five for my table, um, and I still would have gotten negative six because it says y always is negative six. So I would have the point five, one, two, three, four, five, down one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I go ahead now and I graph this, I get a horizontal line like that. Okay, so where's my y-intercept? Well, my y-intercept is right here at negative six. Okay, well, what's the slope of this line? Well, if I pick two points and I do the rise over the run, well, to get from this point to this point, I didn't have to go up at all. But I did have to go two over, which is my run. And remember when zero is on the top, it's just a zero. So that means that there is no slope. Okay, so whenever you see the equation of a line and it just has y equals a number or x equals a number, think about doing it as a table of values. And what it's telling you is that when the second variable isn't there, it's saying that the other variable is already known. It's always going to be whatever it's equal to. Okay, so your job now is to do this on your own.